שלום עליכם, יהי שם אדוני מבורך מעתה ועד עולם, מהשם נזנים ובי, בלס ואבר אין אבר. אמן. Today it's a shiur, class number four, about blessing the bread. Followed by another class about emet, truth. I hope we will finish it. After that, Be'ezrat Hashem, we're going to visit Israel. May Hashem bring peace to the land of Israel at all time. Amen. And Be'ezrat Hashem, from next week, classes classes are continue regularly. Everybody should continue coming to the class. Be'ezrat Hashem, Lishama will he knows he got the curriculum, he got the the topics and everything he's going to be teaching. Same way with the camera that you know blocking the view for you guys in the back and the zoom. Everything is going to be the same. Just someone look nicer than me. And it's going to be Be'ezrat Hashem Torah classes about halachot. First class going to be halachot starting to talk about very interesting insights about the high holidays that just around the corner like the last 60 days the meaning of Shofan, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur Woo! a lot to talk classes will be around one hour I'll try to keep it one hour 30 or 40 minutes halachot 20 minutes Parashat Shavua this is uh, uh, in the hands of uh, Elishama so Be'ezrat Hashem, I'm expecting to see everybody coming and bringing more people to learn Torah, Be'ezrat Hashem. I'll try, I make no promises, but I'll try to join you on Zoom. Shalom Aleichem, come on in. Zoom, the time difference is around eight hours, so you can imagine that it's around 4 a.m. in Israel. So that's not going to be so easy, but I'll make efforts. I'll make efforts, Be'ezrat Hashem, to join you. If not, you have to forgive me. No, no, I'll make it interesting so you don't fall asleep. That's for sure, like all your classes, Baruch Hashem. Um, we discussed last time about many halachot about the bread, how should we break the bread, and I'm sure that you guys at home, this Shabbat, last Shabbat, was a little bit different than the Shabbat taught before because you already learned some halachot. So now you're being careful in how to break the bread, how to give it, what's the size, and so forth and so on. You'd be surprised that uh, many even religious people are not aware of this basic halachot. And we have, Baruch Hashem, the, the honor to learn this daily halachot, something we practice and can perform and get the, the reward to its highest level. Okay? Of course, I'm not, not with kavanot and all that, we're not there yet. But uh, at least to do it right, technically. Okay. Are you guys comfortable over there? Yes. Sitting like on a throne over there, huh? <laughs> Tough. If you can, you only able to hear me. Just let me know. So we've learned last time. We end up with a question: Are we allowed to deliver bread from hand to hand? No. Can we do that with a wine? With uh, what about the giving someone a, a cup of ju a juice, a cup of tea, a wine? We see that all the time, but you rarely see people passing bread, a piece of bread from hand to hand. So the halacha is, I start with saying that um, when um, if if there is a, a central platter or a bowl of food from which each person of the group will take his portion. The person who recited al Muzi is giving the honor of taking his portion before all, other, all the others, since he is the one whom the others have honored as the leader of the meal. It follows that he should receive this honor as well. If he wishes to give this honor to someone else who is more uh, distinguished he may do so. When the leader distributes the bread, he must not hand it to the person who is going to eat it. Hand it. 
not pl placing it on a platter or on a bowl, hand to hand. He should put the pieces down on the table in front of each person for them to pick up and eat. This method should be used even when giving bread to little children, as long as they are capable of picking up the bread from the table on their own. Some communities, Hasidic communities, their customs, I'm not going to go through this, why, the reason, they're throwing the bread. Many other poskim hold that this is not appropriate to throw any type of food, especially bread. They have their own reasoning, they're backed up, whatever a great rabbis Hasidish do, they is backed up with uh, some tradition, right? But this is not our way. And even if, by the way, someone asks you for an apple, fruit, we're not supposed to throw fruit. We should give respect to the food that we're eating and even the waste. We should be very careful with how to waste it and how to throw it to the trash. There's a lachot about that as well. Hashem is giving you beracha, you don't step on it. Showing appreciation is even to give him a you know, honor a burial. I don't know if I said that. You put uh, crumbs in, in, in a plastic bag uh, or a piece of paper and put it in the trash. Oh, give it to the animals. It's all good. Okay. Um, when distributing the bread of Hamotzi to mourners, someone that lost a beloved one and is mourning now, to mourners, he are observing Shiva, who are observing Shiva. The leader hands the bread directly from his hand to theirs. So this is a sign of mourners. This is a custom of mourners. This is alluded to the verse in Eka. Echa in, what's Echa we're saying? Uh, I always forget to say. Lamentation. lamentation, thank you. In Lamentation, Echa 117. Zion stretched out her hands. On Shabbat, Whoever he must, uh, however, he must not hand the bread to the mourners since it is forbidden to display any practice of mourning on Shabbat. So during the week, these mourners will get from to their hands. But on Shabbat, they're still mourners, but they're not supposed to show any sign. They can dress up uh, nicely for Shabbat. But after Shabbat, if it's continued, the Shiva, the seven days, uh, as soon as Shabbat is over, they're, they're changing clothing, changing, and going back to sit on uh, a lower bench or on the floor itself. But on Shabbat, we should not display any uh, sign of mourning. Okay, as on Shabbat, nonetheless, he's mourner or she, you don't hand, hand to hand. Okay? Any questions so far? Good, very simple, very basic, right? Uh, the leader must not throw the pieces of bread onto the table for the others to pick up. Even, there is no, even if there is no danger of bread being ruined by being thrown, furthermore, since the blessing of Amotzi was recited specifically on this bread, it would be disrespectful to the blessing to throw this bread, and so forth and so on. Makes sense. Okay. Now, let's say someone is not eating the bread. Someone else doesn't know how to say the bracha. He says, well, you know what? Can you do me a favor and say the bracha? I will say amen so I can eat the bread. He goes, well, man, I don't want to eat bread. No, no, just say it for me, for me. Uh, so I don't know how to say the bracha. I listen to you. You have me in mind. And I don't eat the bread. The above rule that one person cannot recite the blessing over food or beverages for someone else unless he is also planning to partake of that food or beverage applies even if the other person is totally incapable of reciting the blessing for himself. If someone would recite the blessing on behalf of another person and not partake of the food or beverage, he will be guilty of reciting and blessing in vain. The person listening to the blessing will therefore not be permitted to partake of his food 
or beverages, a proper blessing was not recited. This is so, even if that person responded Amen to the blessing. What about little kids? You want to say the Bechat to little kids? Five years old, four years old, they speak, they talk. Six years old, already uh, first grade. When it comes to children, however, the rule is different. It is permissible for an adult to recite the blessing with God's name on behalf of a child, even if the adult does not pl plan to partake of anything. His act of reciting the words of the blessing is considered an act of training and educating the child, and therefore it is justified. This is a rule even if the adult is not a parent of that child. If the child does not know how to recite the blessing by himself, an adult may recite together with him word by word, including God's name. Instead of saying, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. No, no, you can say Hashem's name. You're teaching him now. It is certainly the proper thing to do regarding one's, one, um, one's own child. Likewise, it's permissible to recite the blessing on behalf of an adult who has never been uh, educated and it is in incapable of reciting the blessing. In this case, one should instruct him to repeat each word mm -hmm. one says and then dictate the blessing to him one word at a time, including God's name. Since this person is an adult, it is not permissible to simply uh, um, uh, recite the blessing on behalf of and instruct him to recite Amen. This was explained in the previous Allah. Okay. I think I think we got uh, the idea. Um, in, in, in some hold that if the adults already know, not the adults, the kids, if you tell them Baruch Ata Ado, and they'll know how to complete, it's okay. But if you have to, you see that this are never uh, learned. Uh, you can say Hashem's name in case they already know. Hello, you can say hello, keep or say I'm all night. It's, it's, you can say that. <sighs> Tough. I think I'm gonna skip that. Any questions? So we are supposed to pronounce the name of Hashem when teaching somebody. Correct. Right. Okay. Now, remember that this is very important not to feed your animals. Some have animals at home. You have dogs, you have, uh, I don't know what you have, parrots, you have fish. You, you say, Baruch Atah Ramatzi Lechim Naran, and you give to his dog. <laughs> ah, I love him more than human being. Okay, maybe. Some have animals at home. You know, there is a saying in Hebrew. I'll say it in Hebrew, and I'll try to translate. I don't know if it works. Hadif haver kelev. No, hadif kelev haver me haver kelev. Do you get that? It's better to have. And it's English. It doesn't sound right. But, but it is true. <laughs> it's better. It's better to have a dog friend than a friend uh, like a dog. You know, <laughs> acting like, uh, like like an animal. Anyways, it never works better. So, you love your, the animal, it's fine, it's all good. But you should distinguish from holiness to something that it's not holy. Okay? You can give them the crumbs, you can give them later, you can prepare them, whatever. But not from the bread. Um, also, some holds that it includes... Um, chickens and even those that they are taho uh, 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 to eat Obviously, permissible. permissible to eat right so not only it applies also to a goat to chickens outside yeah. you eat from the bread and the rest you throw it to the kosher chickens the core not this piece go ahead To the what? To the kosher. 
<laughs> Correct, that's it. I just said that. I said that. Well, we're talking about this piece that the leader of the table is saying, the rest yeah. is different. Yeah. If there is left over and the, um, the choice now is between garbage or give it to the animal, definitely right. the animal should get it. Right? right? Okay. I'll share with you something that I thought maybe not, but I'll share with you anyway. <coughs> Someone asked me the other day, can he give it to a non Jew? What? There's non Jew sitting on his table. He's saying I'm Oti and giving from that piece to a non Jew. Can I do that? Yeah. Yes. Based on what you're saying, yes. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> well, you yeah. compare yeah. you compare it to an Andrew, God forbid, to an animal. Yeah. But it is not In Judaism, you need to understand one thing. There is no um, equal equality. You see? Yeah. Yeah. There's no. We're not equal. There's Kohen, there's Levi, there's Israel. There's different levels. Kohen can eat something and he can't give it to a Levi. He can't give it to Israel. If he right. give, he'll be punished. <laughs> we can give it to his own slave and not give it to me. Right. Can. Because this food belongs to the Kohanim family. He can give it only to his, in his group. If to you, it's going to call to Uma that was eaten in the wrong way. You seen, he seen. Everybody seen was a story with the Rambam. Rambam, he was uh, challenged by a thousand years ago with many people that envy him. As soon as you talk with the Rambam, you notice that he is a hundred levels above you and you make him, not the king, but at least second to the king or advisor. In every field you, you want to touch, from physics, and, and medicine or whatever, he is the expert. It was one, one of a kind. Humanity. So those who envy him told the king, you know, he's, uh, the Rabbi Moshe is playing with you. What do you mean? He's very respectful. He said, you notice you never drink from the wine you, you touch. Everybody here drinks, he doesn't. What he thinks is special. Try him. Try him next time. If you can, you know, it's called Nayin Nesar. You can't touch it, right? The Torah forbid that. When the Nanju touch Yain that is not cooked, mm. you can't touch it. Why? Mm. One of the reasons is because you sit with a Nanju drinking an alcohol together, you become too friendly, and then intermarriage. That's the main, main, main problem. You can drink coffee with them, tea, but alcoholic beverage is different. Okay? That's the main, main, main reason. So the, the, the king says, okay, I'm going to test him uh, tomorrow. But Moshe doesn't know about it. Rambam doesn't know. He comes, lunch is served. Rambam eating his own stuff. And then the king himself is pouring. And he gave it to Rambam. And the king is playing like nothing is going on. And he's looking at the Rambam. He's seeing that this guy is not drinking from it. He was really upset. And the other advisor says, you see, <laughs> told you, disrespectful, <laughs> disgusting, <laughs> putting fire, probably putting more fuel into the fire. So the Rambam noticed the tension and he says to the king, um, you probably wonder why I'm not drinking from the wine, right? And then he says, I'll tell you at the very end of the meal. Yes, I was playing with you. He's waiting for the finish. He's going to run away. You forget about it. Don't worry, I'll remind you. I'm sure you'll remind me. At the very end of the meal, they're giving them rose water. You know what rose water? Yeah. So they can clean the hands. And they have some good essence on it. So the king obviously gets a nice, I don't know what they call it, goblet or whatever. And they're pouring this water on him. It's like my Mahronim stylish. Okay. Giving, and the cup is full of it. And the says, Stop! 
give me the, this water. The Rambam took this water and he drank it before the king. Everybody went in shock. He said, what are you doing? It's a waste. You should go to the sewer, you know. He said, now I'll explain to you. And he explained to him that it's forbidden. With Judaism, it's nothing about him. It's nothing about him being clean or unclean. It's something on a spiritual level. And, and the Torah, said, not permit that, that's it. He said, I can drink this water, but not just the wine. By the way, but if the wine was cooked, it's different. So he gave them the whole Dvar Torah. And then they did the Zimun. And they finished that. <laughs> But, um, you know, with his wisdom, he was able to save himself. Yeah. Going back to what we learned, and I think that's the last halacha for today. Not two minutes. Um, okay, so also, you, you got the answer about giving from the bread that you eat, you eat yourself, to someone that is not obligated, like the non-Jew. Even if he's on your table and he's practicing, but many people here came to our house for Shabbat. Mm -hmm. You saw that you do eat from the bread that I'm cutting. Yeah. How is it possible? You didn't notice? Yeah. It's never from what I'm eating, correct myself. It's from the other piece of the bread that everybody eats. My wife gets from that too. My I'm eating from that. This is my piece. And then everyone else, I break from what's. This is the custom of the Ari, by the way, to give from what is left over here. So you need to understand it's nothing against, God forbid, the non Jews. You have a different role in this world. And the Jews have a different role in this world. And even among Jew Jewish people, there's different roles and ref different responsibilities. Like I mentioned, even the, the Levi want to be Kohen, he can't he can do that can be severely punished. You know, Datan, not Datan Aviram, the children, Nadav and Avihu, the children of Aharon, they did something wrong, immediately Hashem took them. They all died on the spot. Yeah. Okay? I think we'll stop here. Um, um, with this one. Um, I will maybe end with a nice question. What if, what if the guy that on the table can be very much insulted if you won't give him from this bread? Let's say he's, uh, he's not the idol worshiper, okay? He's a Shmeeli, he's Arab. Sitting on the table and they, uh, I want to say, this guy get insulted quickly. If he see that you don't, uh, Give a name, he's going to be very upset. Can I break the rule and give it to him and get it over with? Allah says, however, it is permissive to give. Oh, hold on. This is the case, even a non Jew is not an other daughter, such as a Muslim. If it is possible that this will cause uh, friction between the non Jew and the Jews, however, it is permissible to give him. The food. Oh, right. The reason why we should treat the food on the table with such respect is because one's dining table represents the altar in the Beit HaMikdash and it helps a person to gain atonement for his sins. So, table should bring peace. You have to be wise about it. If you see you get insulted, give it to him. You can't give everybody and but him. At the end of the day, is your guest. Right? Make sense? No. So either nobody or yes, buddy. <laughs> Any questions? No questions. No questions. I will die. On behalf of the Israel Foundation, I want to thank everybody. Continue, please, with your, uh, with your support. I think Elishama will uh, talk next week about more ideas how to help out and Bezat Hashem we have to move on I want to thank all those who have the families they are leaving tomorrow no on what Thursday they are leaving on Thursday all those who helped out to take them to bring them such a mitzvah comes to your door 
it's a test from Shamaim, I'm telling you. And Baruch Hashem, I'm proud of our group, the night class that people volunteered more than once. And Hashem see that. You can't even imagine how much, how many decrees Hashem moved from from you and your family just by participating in such mitzvah. People took them here and there to oxygen treatment and you name it. So well, we have obviously more families coming in, more can join in and uh, help out. I'm gonna be available, like I'm here on WhatsApp to coordinate if someone wants to volunteer, we'll advertise it, yada, yada, yada. So we met, we want to strengthen Ohev Israel and help. thank you for all your support. God bless you, we'll see you in a minute.